will stop the invasion of criminals into our country, and I will bring back the American dream for your children and for yourself. This is all you need to know. Kamala broke it. I will fix it. Kamala broke it. Yes, she broke it. And Trump will fix it. Election Day is a week from tomorrow. The media is having a mental meltdown. Because, you know, you know how they are. Well, happy and good Monday to you. Got a lot going on in our our once happy and humble little country. But now you know who is here. Now, we just spoke to Alan in Chicago who uh, talked about his cousin who was a um, an American soldier in World War II, went into uh, one of the death camps that Hitler and his Socialist Workers Party had set up to exterminate people by the millions because that's what the Socialist Workers Party does, and that's what the Communist Party does, and that's what the Socialist Utopianists do. Uh, if history is their guide, and it is, it's the in- inevitable and invariable result of socialism and utopianism. But Alan said that his cousin uh, could not forget the smell of the uh, the death camps uh, 60 years after the fact. And, and I understand that, uh, having experienced a much lesser crime against humanity in my, in my personal life. But, uh, but enough about me. Let's go to, let's go to this nice 94-year-old Holocaust survivor. 94-year-old man who's a Holocaust survivor. Jerry v- Vartsky. Vartsky. It's, it's going to be Wartsky in the United States because it's a W, but I assume it's a Polish name, Vartsky. And um, the 94-year-old man, he has his personal memories of the Holocaust, too, and he knows what the socialist workers' parties of the world will do for you. And he was asked about the, hey, you know, the Democrats are calling Donald Trump Hitler all over the place, and it's going to be a Hitler rally in Madison Square Garden with a, a good contingent of Jews for Trump wearing Jews for Trump yarmulkes inside of Madison Square Garden, also known as MAGA Square Garden. Uh, this week, it's it's got a new nickname. And who is it? The New York Post, I think, has the MAGA Square Garden it's the MAGA Square Garden because of the big rally there yesterday and the people outside trying to get in and all that stuff. But let me go to soundbite number 15 and the 95-year-old, uh, 94-year-old, pardon me, don't want to age him prematurely, 94-year-old Jerry Vartsky, a survivor of the Holocaust, and asked about, hey, you know, the Democrats are calling everybody Hitler around here. What do you think of that, Jer? I know more about Hitler than Kamala will ever know in a thousand lifetimes. For her to accuse President Trump of being like Hitler is the worst thing I've ever heard in my 75 years years living in the United States. His 75 years living in the United States, post-World War II years living in the United States, and Jerry says, and it's, you know, Kamala, oh, is he a fascist? Is he Hitler? Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't take my word for it. Okay, I won't. Amazing stuff. The uh, the crooked crooked Democrat said and Kamala did a little uh, a little interview of some kind with Nora O'Donnell at CBS News and I have some of that for you. It has not aired yet. A clip aired in their morning show, but uh, never mind that. So here is uh, Jerry Vartsky, an actual Holocaust survivor. I know President Trump, and he would never say this. And Kamala Harris knows it. This. She owns my parents and everybody else who was murdered by Hitler an apology for repeating this lie. She'd like an apology for this big lie from Kamala Harris. You know, the, uh, the other day, now I, I, I want to play this in order, the CBS interview this morning with Nora O'Donnell uh, and Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. They've got AOC out there, too, uh, making all kinds of idiotic statements. Uh, but she has the IQ of a rutabaga, so 
it's not really her fault. She just wasn't born with the gifts. Except then the Democrat said, hey, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd date her. I'm using a, a euphemism. And so they said, let's run her for Congress. She won a contest. Amazing stuff. But here is uh, the CBS News interview, Nora O'Donnell talking to Kamala Harris and say, hey, you know, you're calling Trump a fascist. Do you think since uh, multiple people have already tried to assassinate him, maybe you should dial down your Nazi Hitler fascist rhetoric? After you called Donald Trump a fascist, the top Republicans in Congress have called on you to tone down your rhetoric. They say it's, quote, irresponsible anti-Trump rhetoric. And they're saying what you're doing could invite another assassination attempt against Donald Trump. How would you respond to that? Well, first of all, I condemn any political violence of any sort against anyone. Blah, blah, blah. But again, but, don't take it from me. Take but, it from the people who know him best. Don't take John it. Kelly, I again urge anyone watching this, go mm-hmm. online and hear John Kelly in his own words. Okay. Uh, we played uh, John Kelly in his own words last week, and we uh, presented the information, the news, accurately, correctly, and fairly. It was a fraud, hack, left-wing, commie, baby killer, New York Times reporter. I'm just summing up your average New York Times reporter. Uh, And a Democrat Party shill who amazingly got former Marine Corps four-star General John Kelly and Trump chief of staff on the phone And it was the New York Times reporter that teed up the language. You, what do you think? Do you think he's a fascist? Well, gosh, let me think about that. Well, I'm looking at the definition of fascism. Which I have right in front of me. Into the the general definition of uh, fascist. Just just happened to have the definition, the dictionary definition right in front of me when you coincidentally asked the question without any prearrangement or staging ahead of time. So wait a minute, was that John Kelly calling him a fascist saying, well, uh, the New York Times reporter teed up the word and the theme, right? Because that's your, uh, that's your Democrat party. And then she said, well, I didn't call him uh, a fascist. John Kelly did. And then Manderson Pooper, another Democrat billionaire, private jet giant mansion, uh, you know, typical run-of-the-mill news media liberal, uh, was talking to Kamala. It wasn't a sit-down interview because they were standing, right? And he said, well, gosh, Kamala. Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Is that John Kelly? And then she tried to pawn it off on John Kelly again, right? Then Nora O'Donnell says, well, you called him a fascist. Well, don't search me. Don't look at me. John Kelly called him a fascist. Actually, uh, if we're tracing it back, we can trace it back to the New York Times reporter who was the uh, person who introduced, but but you little fascist, you little, you know, uh, uh, police station burning, courthouse attacking, uh, rioting, looting, violent criminal mob, you know, Democrat Party people, amazing stuff. But that's, uh, that's come on. So now you don't have to watch the CBS interview tonight because we just shared with you the only salient passage. And then did Nora O'Donnell say, but, but I have a series of follow-ups. And we may never know because uh, this morning they played the one clip and nobody will watch the later clip. So we'll have to we'll have to see. Isn't that amazing? Mm-mm-mm. Yes, sir. A, uh, it's uh, funny. The Babylon Bee, the wonderful Babylon Bee. On July 8th of 2024, their headline was it's a satirical paper and they're funny and they're online. Uh, Unlike The Onion, which used to be funny, but they gave up on being funny because of the Democrat Party. They banned funny. But on July 8th, 2024, the Babylon Bee headline with a a photograph of Chuck Schumer standing at a podium and a, a poster board of Donald Trump next to him with a Hitler mustache saying Hitler mustache next to him. But the headline from the Babylon Bee on July 8th was Dems announced comprehensive plan to win election by calling Trump Hitler again. All right, now, that was satire then, and it was actually before they had gone with the full-blown campaign of calling Trump Hitler, but, but that's what they're doing because they don't have anything positive to run on. They can't point to the economy or the border or crime, which they've lied to us about, lied to us about, lied to us about, lied to us about the border, 
lied to us about the illegal aliens, lied to us about crime, and then the FBI was caught lying to us about the crime. Isn't that amazing? Bop, bop, bop. And the Democrat mayor of New York City is a man by the name of Eric Adams. Um, he complained out loud about all the illegal aliens being dumped on the sidewalks of New York and the billions that they've had to spend on the illegal aliens because of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's open border policy. And when he did complain about that, the Biden-Harris administration unleashed the Justice Department on him, and they found that he accepted upgrades on Turkish air from coach to first class while he was flying back and forth to Turkey. Nobody knows why he's going back and forth to Turkey. But they're Democrats, so it was no big deal until he annoyed the Biden-Harris administration. And now he's been charged with a whole long list of felonies and could go to prison for 100,000 years uh, because they're, they're, a criminal, but they're criminals. But uh, Eric Adams, Mayor Eric Adams, the Democrat mayor of Democrat New York City, who is now under indictment for accepting bribes all over the place, which he thought was okay. And the reason he thought it was okay is because it was okay until the Biden-Harris administration and our crooked criminal attorney general, Merrick Garland, unleashed uh, the, you know, the bad guy cops on him to charge him with a long list of crimes. And then they get the media to jump in and say, oh, everybody should be furious that he took an upgrade from coach to first class. Shouldn't he go to prison for a long time for that? Just because he's the mayor of New York, he can't be upgraded from coach to first class. Come on. So Merrick, Eric Adams over the weekend with a little dose of the real world. You believe, as others have said, that the former president is a fascist? You know, I have been, uh, had those terms hurled at me by some uh, political leaders in the city, uh, using terms like Hitler and fascist. Uh, you have? My answer fascist? is uh, no. Uh, my answer to that is no. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. That's, uh, you know, but it's the Hitler rhetoric. I think that we must be extremely uh, cautious. Um, cautious? The heat we turn up today, pre-election, is going to have to be the heat we're going to have to govern it. And I think we need to show a level of respectable communication. And so uh, when people called me uh, fascist and other terminologies, fascist. Uh, it's fascist. I didn't like it. Not fascist. Um, and I don't think is uh, fitting to uh, anyone to state that um, the former president is, is is equal to being Hitler. Well, but that's uh, you know the, the that's the Democrat Party, uh, the party that threw all the Japanese Americans into prison camps during World War II, and harvest the organs of more than one million babies every year. But pay no attention to that. Now, Michael Goodwin, in the New York Post. Published a piece uh, day before yesterday, Saturday, in the New York piece and the New York Post, and the the piece is headlined: Kamala Harris needs to stop the Hitler rhetoric with Donald Trump before we see more violence. But the left is always violent everywhere they go. And Michael Goodwin writes: Imagine you're Kamala Harris and you've gone all Hitler all the time, but no assassins have granted your wish, and Donald Trump continues to build a significant lead. Now what? That's the crucial question facing vice president and desperate Democrats. With apologies to Willie Nelson, uh, the days dwindle down to a precious few. Now, the reality is, of course, that, that uh, they have stirred up the anti-Trump violence and attempted assassinations and more and more. And he's still definitely not out of danger between now and Election Day. And then... When Donald Trump wins the election eight days from today, what does the Democrat Party do about the person that they have said loud and clear over and over and over again is Hitler? They obviously can't allow Hitler to assume power. They can't just do nothing and shrug and say, ah, oh, we didn't really mean it. So what do they do then? Could the fate of America's children be tied to Everyone's fate in the United States most certainly could. 
You know, much like the abortionists that uh, end the lives of the unborn, the left seems hell-bent and determined to do the same thing and expand, expand, expand. First, they try to target the unborn babies, and then who knows who they're going to come for next, right? This this uh, disregard for human life to be generous. Well, preborn, the good people at preborn, they stand as a beacon of hope for the most defenseless people among us, unborn babies. Now, Everyday Preborn's network of clinics helps to rescue, on average, 200 unborn babies every day while surrounding expectant mothers with love and God and offering a free ultrasound. Witnessing the miracle by way of ultrasound, the miracle of life, has never been more crucial as we navigate this crazy time of moral decline. Will you please help by joining Preborn to help protect the lives of the least among us? For just $28, you can sponsor an ultrasound and give a mother, young mother, a chance to choose life, not only for the baby, but for herself as well. You know, an ultrasound could double the baby's chance of having a long and happy and prosperous life. To donate securely, just dial pound 250. Dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. Pound 250, the keyword is baby. Or you can go to preborn.com slash plant. Preborn.com slash plant, P-L-A-N-T-E. That's preborn.com slash plant. Yeah, the uh, the whole Hitler thing. And then Trump wins. What do they do? Say, well, looks like we're going to have to uh, live with Hitler. I don't think so. And unlike them, I remember all the riots and the violence and the chaos and the terror groups that the Democrat Party has stood up over the years. But that's me. What you're doing could invite another assassination attempt against Donald Trump. Yeah, they had, you know, Ryan Wesley Ruth was indicted trying to assassinate Trump at his golf course in in September. Also, an Idaho man on, I believe, the same day was arrested threatening to assassinate President Trump called Mar-a-Lago nine times in one day, threatening to kill him. Warren Jones, crazy bull, 64-year-old crazy bull, threatening to murder Trump. And Ryan Wesley Ruth, threatening to murder Trump. And, and uh, you know, uh, to, to shot and killed at the Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, after having shot Trump. Isn't that amazing? And the Democrats are still... Pulling out all the Hitler stops here. And an important and relevant question is, what do they do when Trump wins? What can they say then? How do they clean up after themselves? Yeah, also Kamala having a rally on the Ellipse tomorrow where she's going to say crazy things. On Friday, they said they'd have 8,000 people. Today, they say they're going to have 20,000 people. Kamala Harris at uh, Andrews Air Force Base, Joint Base Andrews today, said Trump is fixated on dividing our country. Then she called half the country Nazis, you know, because that's what these fascists do, these Nazi fascist baby slaughtering. And it did, as one of our brilliant uh, listeners said after calling in earlier today, it really began with Barack Obama dividing the country and the Democrats saying, well, if you don't support him, Obama, it's because you're a racist, right, says the party of Jefferson Davis and the KKK, the Democrat Party. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is crazy, crazy out there. Crazy, man, crazy. Mm-mm. Uh, all right, I see a, uh, let's uh, take a, a call. Is there one more you wanted to get to on this topic? Uh, it's Kamala. She's uh, babbling at, at Andrews. Joint Base Andrews, not Andrews Air Force Base anymore. Now it's joint because there are Navy people there. There have always been Navy people there, but never mind then. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to the phones. Let's uh, go to Mike calling from South Riding, Virginia. Mikey, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Um, you know the uh, White House installing these uh, spikes, if you want to call them that, atop the fence. Um, you know, totalitarian if you want to call them Democrat Party totalitarian uh, regimes, they know how to manipulate public thinking uh, through physical and uh, 
textual and uh, verbal propaganda. I think they, they could be doing this on purpose to get people to go, oh, my God, Trump is Trump. There's going to be rioting if Trump doesn't win. I, I better vote for Harris mm-hmm. and we've got to keep him out of the White House mm-hmm. because I wouldn't be shocked if today, tomorrow, sometime this week, Mayorkas and or Garland come out and say, we have credible intelligence that if Donald Trump wins, there will be rioting all across the country and blah, blah, blah. And that's going to intimidate people who haven't voted yet into mm-hmm. voting for Harris. Now, I think the fix is in for Harris. Um, the Democrats are not going to let Trump or any, anybody else win. And this is just for show, essentially. Um, I think that the Democrat Party also, if if on the very small chance Trump does win, the Democrat Party is going to unleash their SA on across the country to cause rioting and burning and looting. And um, they're all probably going to be wearing Trump gear, you know, carrying flags and jackets and wearing hats just to make it look like these Trump people are going crazy. They're, they're going to destroy the country. That way Biden can come out before – he uh, leaves office. He can declare, uh, you know, martial law, essentially. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he declares a national emergency and suspends the uh, election results. Um, now, this sounds far-fetched, but mm-hmm. again, totalitarian regimes, right. um, you know, until the emergency is over. Well, guess who determines when the emergency is over? Right. Well, let me let me just say that it is uh, you're not alone in thinking what you are expressing out loud here. And uh, and I welcome all of this discussion because we're the United States of America. And what's truly appalling to me, Mike, is that we're having this discussion in the United States of America for real, that we have that we have so lost faith, trust and confidence in our public institutions and our government and our ability to have an election that we're really having this discussion uh, about what our government will do to lie to us. And they lie to us about pretty much everything from the, you yeah. know, the monthly jobs numbers and economic numbers mm-hmm. and the, and the inflation numbers. And then they revise them when nobody's looking and the media ignores it because the media is the most corrupt institution. And they right. lie to us about the border and the illegal aliens and the Venezuelan gangs and the crimes that they're committing. Then the FBI, we found, have been lying with the crime stats that the Democrats had been parroting, and that means the news media had been parroting that crime is down until we learned that crime was up uh, because they corrupted the statistics. And uh, and we had our own intelligence community uh, tampering in the presidential election in 2020, the last time around, with that felonious 51 letter lying to the American people, running an information operation against the American people saying it had all the earmarks of Russian disinformation. And it was really John Brennan, the Communist Party voting, literally, Gus Hall voting uh, Democrat CIA director, made CIA director by Barack Obama, who, when he was a teenager, his mentor was a communist named Frank Marshall Davis. And the stinking, rotten, smelly, murderous, treacherous commies uh, are in charge of way too damn much in the Democrat Party, and they lie and they cheat and they steal and they corrupt our public institutions, which is what lefties do everywhere that they secure power, whether it's Nicaragua or Venezuela or Cambodia or Vietnam or wherever it may be. When the commies secure power, it's the same thing over and over again. And the left is here. I don't know how many yep. times I have to say it. I've been saying it for a long time. Oh, I, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm quite emphatic about this and with good reason that the left is not liberal at all. The left are the most illiberal gang of murderers that human history has ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I tell people, I say, you know, people, you don't understand the Democrat Party. They, they only see power and control. And the Republicans, oh, well, we'll, we'll run on principle. Right. Yeah, we'll see how that goes for you. Yeah, and, the, and, and that's why, uh, you know, uh, control has been trending against us for generations now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the left has a long-term plan like radical Islamists, like the communists right. of the 20th century, because they, in effect, are today's variation on the communists of the 20th century in the Soviet Union and the communist Chinese, 
they had and the communist and then look uh, the communist Chinese and Vlad the Impaler Putin still have a hundred year yeah. plan uh, to mm-hmm. reestablish totalitarianism and the Democrat Party is very much their ally. Yeah, well, it all started with a, you know, the Democrat Party started like about forty some years ago mid-80s, late-80s, taking over the public education system. Right. And now they're just, you know, for 40 years they've been cranking out good little uh, socialists. Yeah. Um, and the government, uh, I've called in before, I, I was a 35-year intel analyst, um, and I've seen it. The government is riddled. I mean, there aren't that many uh, non-leftists in the government anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, and the one thing the government, I've seen it, the one thing the government is really good at, if the president, they don't like the president, and the president isn't carrying out their policies, they're supposed to carry out his or her policies, not the other way around. Um, they will ig- either ignore, and either just overtly just say, we're not doing this, or they ignore it, the, the, the typical way they ignore it is they just, take their time uh, slow, slow roll to it. implement anything exactly yeah. slow roll it until everybody forgets about it and uh, exactly yep. <clears throat> yeah well you remember you remember uh, you <clears throat> pardon me 35 years in intelligence i i uh, that's not me but i did spend 10 years covering intelligence m- my office in the pentagon allegedly mm-hmm. covering you know the military and the uh, and the intelligence community and you remember what chuck schumer said about the intelligence community. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. Uh, That's uh, President Trump being critical of the intelligence community, and then 51 of them undermined his uh, re-election bid in 2020, and they should all be in handcuffs. They should have been in handcuffs the day Mm -hmm. it was discovered that it was a fraud that they perpetrated a criminal fraud, a political fraud that they perpetrated yep. against the American people and corrupting our system. And I think that the likes of John Brennan, uh, again, Communist Party voter, how many Communist Party voters, you know, mm-hmm. amazing stuff. Uh, they, that, well, you know, corrupting or running an information operation against the American people. Well, Chris, you know, when you apply for a security, well, more, more in light, when you apply for a security clearance, and you've got to fill out the uh, form. It's an SF-82. There's a question on there. Have you now or have you ever been a member of any group that has sought the overthrow of the U.S. government? Uh-huh. More or less, that's, that's a direct quote. Right. You say yes or no. Right. Now, it's a government form. You say yes and you are a member, then, of course, that, you know, that's a felony, blah, blah, blah. Well, you get asked the same question on a polygraph. Now, is voting for a communist party uh, the Communist Party is—is is that? Are you now? Uh, are you a member of that group? You know, you're right. supporting their ideals. Right. You may not be a card carrier, but that's what you're doing. Yeah. So if you know, I I, 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 I talk to people who have had security clearances, and they all say the same thing: is how the hell did Brennan get a security clearance? Right. Yeah, you know? and then and then he had left, and uh, Barack Obama brought him back in, made him. Mm -hmm. chief uh, terrorism advisor, and then made him CIA director, and then he stole the presidential election, was a major factor, John Brennan was, in stealing the 2020, corrupting the 2020 Mm -hmm. election with that uh, felonious 51 letter, no doubt about it. And Brennan is um, a grotesque uh, pig. He's penitentiary face. That's why I call him penitentiary face, and I identified him very early on. Uh, Michael, thank you very much for the call. And for well, thirty you. and for thirty five years, I can tell you were doing uh, the Lord's work, doing good work, uh, not like so many of these, you know, per- permanent bureaucrats. And again, who <clears throat> who killed John F. Kennedy? Was it Lee Harvey Oswald, a communist, or was it the permanent bureaucracy, the deep state? Uh, and when is the CIA going to release all the documents on the John F. Kennedy assassination? Donald Trump said he'll he'll do that lickety split. Now, speaking of communists, Mike. Van Jones, who famously identified as a communist and was brought in once again to the Obama White House, to the Obama White House. Hey, well, and, and they went around bragging. We just, we identified him long ago. We, we like the cut of his jib. He's a communist. And they brought, and self-identified out loud in magazine interviews and things. 
as a communist. And then they brought Van Jones into uh, the uh, Obama White House because they said they loved everything about him. Then CNN hired him to be their uh, their analyst. Then Bill Maher had uh, Van Jones on his, uh, you know, they pay him like $12 million a year to do a one uh, hour a week on HBO because the left and information dominance, the commie information dominance, you know, amazing stuff. And Bill Maher's not even funny. And he's got like 28 writers. And he's still not funny. But uh, Bill Maher with Van Jones on Friday night. If progressives have a politics that says all white people are racist, all men are toxic, and all billionaires are evil, it's kind of hard to keep them on your side. And so we might want to think about if you're chasing people out of the party, you can't be mad when they leave. And maybe if we had a different politics, we actually said dignity for everybody, everybody's respected and we need you, more people might stay. A little smattering of applause from the morons because they've got somebody, you know, waving their arm up in front of them. Hey, clap now, clap now. It's all fake. Uh, yeah, honestly, if you go around saying that, you know, all men are evil and all white people are racist and, and uh, now, you know, uh, 80 million Republicans are Nazis. Um, you might get slapped in the face someday, honestly. But the communist Van Jones, uh, he, he, now I've said this before, he gets it right every now and then. He's not an unintelligent person. He's a totally brainwashed, radical left-wing extremist uh, media figure and Democrat Party White House official, no big deal, Van Jones. When you have somebody who is a, a world-famous superstar, who's a billionaire, et cetera, et cetera, and they do something you don't expect, it's brilliant media. And I think we got to acknowledge that this guy is beating the pants off of us with, with these so-called publicity stunts. They, it gets into everybody's feeds, and people who are not looking at politics will look at that. I think we just have to be, have more fun ourselves. We were having a great time during the Democratic Convention. If we have more fun, Burning if, our, flags. if the Democratic Party is a party of fun, people will join it. We should be, we should be doing crazy stuff, too. Yeah, and if I might add... You're the party of flag burning and monkey pox. You're the, fla- you're, the, you're the party of looting and arson. You're the party of political riots. And then, I've got to say, this makes me sad, but uh, my uh, old... Um, if not former friend, Michael Steele, who used to be a Republican and is now an MSNBC person. And he's out there fanning the flames of of the next civil war. The lying and the on-ground cheating has already started. We've seen it. It it has the official patina of legislative action like we see in Georgia. But that's part of their steal and their lie about this election. So overwhelm the ballot with your vote, baby. They can't they can't top that. Yeah, baby, they can't top that. That's, uh, but unfortunately for the radical left, and Michael Steele used to be a good, reasonable guy. Now he used to come into the studio here and do shows with us here. And he was Republican lieutenant governor of the state of Maryland. And uh, then something went terribly wrong. Now he said, yeah, the Republicans are already cheating, already stealing. The cheating and stealing has already started, and it's legislative. Well, the Democrats last time around, for example, in Pennsylvania, which they couldn't have won the election without. They uh, violated the state constitution and changed election law on a county level, which had to go through the state house, but they didn't. Just to name one example of... And then, of course, the intelligence officials, led in part by... uh, and, And by the way, that was Tony Blinken, who is our secretary of state now, that started the ball rolling with that intelligence letter with the 51 criminals trying to overthrow the government and succeeding. You know, you're supposed to do that in third world hell holes, but now that you guys have turned us into a third world hell hole, I guess, you know, it's our chickens coming home to roost. Right wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election. Now, CNN this morning is uh, bringing on left-wing Democrat radicals to who are involved in Election Day, who are preparing for violence on Election Day. Bulletproof glass, panic buttons, barricades deployed amid anger because they're talking about all kinds of violence on Election Day. NBC News, NBC News with the headline, extremists inspired by conspiracy theories, pose major threat 
to 2024 elections, U.S. intelligence warns. So now U.S. intelligence community is tampering in our election again. Candidates, elected officials, election workers, members of the media and judges involved in election cases are among those U.S. intelligence officials identified as targets. That's a lot of people. So the left here is ginning up. Uh, they're, they're dialing it up to 100 because that's who they are. Boy, oh, boy. All right, let's take another phone call, Mike. Let's go to Robert, who is listening online, calling from, what is it? Corvallis, Oregon. Corvallis, Oregon. Robert, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. I just want to say that one of the reasons I love listening to you is because I've been saying Mano Manischewitz, you know, for 50 years, too. (laughs) Um, Look, I think the Democrats have a real problem with conflicting beliefs. Uh They want to support women, and women are everything, and then they want to allow men to beat them up in sports. They want to support LGBT, but then they want to support Hamas, who wants to kill LGBT. Right. But I think one of the, the biggest conflicts they have that we haven't talked about is the idea that every person should have the choice of what gender they want to be. Every child should have that choice, even in elementary school. But somehow they don't believe that every child should be born so they can have that choice. So <laughs> That's funny. Their rights to, to choose by not allowing them to be born in the first place which means they can't choose what gender to be. Very funny. Well, just a million a year. And that's why they're so, you know, and and that's why we're the reality party. The R stands for the reality party. I I don't know what their their thinking is. It's way crazy. They're chaos. They're chaos from get smart, you know. That's who they are. They're completely insane. Uh, Thank you for the call, Robert. Wonderful call. Uh, We'll see you all back here again tomorrow. (laughs) 